Hey folks, welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Matt and this is Crypto Heartbeat. Thanks for being here. It's two o'clock Central Texas time. And I have to say thank you to Forrest. Help me with my new mic. If it sounds good, let me know in the chat. If you're liking the sound of the new mic, I think we got it all dialed in. It needs to be a little louder. Let me know. Folks, welcome back. We got a big show today. We got two special guests and this is going to be uh, this can be fun, but it's the calm before the storm. You see, there's a little storm happening outside my uh, my uh, hotel room right now. It's just going to be good, folks. This is going to be really, really good. I know we got folks coming over from Brandon, uh, his stream, and you can probably guess one of the the guests that's going to be on today. But folks, this is the calm before the storm. If you saw last night, we were so excited, so excited about the Pulse Chain launch. Pulse chain launch. You know, what What was the reason that we got so excited? Well, let's do it again. Let's share it again. It's Richard Hart. Richard Hart. I'll tell you what. Let's zoom in on this thing, right? This is your warning. That Pulse chain and Pulse X can launch at any time without warning, folks. Without warning. And I know you're excited about this, but Rags did a really good job in the last stream sharing with you, hey, be careful. You got to have a plan. Make sure you're ready to go. There's a lot going on here. Of course, my approach as being the elder statesman is to chill, is to chill. You don't have to make a bunch of moves, right? You don't have to make a bunch of moves. Um, fantastic, folks. Sam Kemp, thanks for the uh, the heads up there. But this is the big news. Let's say hello to you, and then we will get into the content today. The calm before the storm. Godfather J6 is number one in the house. You got here early, man. It was great to see you. Crypto Ethos, darn. If it wasn't for Godfather J6, you'd be first. That's right. Crypto Ethos, one of these days, you'll get up there. Early bird gets the worm. Anders, howdy. I'll be back in an hour and a half. Fantastic. David Gomez, uh, please hit the like button, as he generally mentions. Thank you so much. Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain is coming, David Gomez says. It is coming, and it is coming soon. And I, I really think that um, I think we're going to see it sooner than later. We got the we got the warning. We got the warning from Richard. We got the warning from uh, from Brent. So we're good. Samantha, good afternoon, y'all. It was great to see Samantha on the Texan tailgate, her first ever stream. If you missed it, you may want to check it out. Make sure you're subscribed to Texan Tailgate. Um, Crypto Compassion's in the house. Uh, Michael Ostell, yes, looking good, folks. But there is a storm on the horizon, and it's not just the pulse chain. There is a storm brewing. We know what's been happening in crypto today, and if you don't know, I'm going to tell you about it. It's a big deal. A lot has happened. The Kenyan president told people to get out of the dollar Right, we got we got a shooting at a Christian school. Oh man, three people are dead. I think, including the shooter. My kids go to a Christian school. I saw that this morning, and just your heart breaks for these things. It is the human heart, my friends. We have choices to make, and we choose sometimes very poorly. Sam Kemp says, "Man, they're coming out of the woodwork. Let's get on it." That's right. Howdy, all. Good to see you, Anders. Uh, Matt, those blue shades of bad, the blue hair and the beard. You like that? You like that? You know, I've got, I got a couple. I got a couple here. Let me pull this down. I'm, I'll show you. I appreciate you mentioning the blue. So I tried to mimic that. I thought, you know, I'll find some blue shades. I've got those. And then I also have these blue shades as well. I wanted to kind of mirror, but I don't know that I've accomplished it yet. So I'm still working on the different blue shades. You can see my computer there, but uh, you can let me know which one's the best, but I'm prepared for this stream because we got some exciting things happening. And when you're an old man, you need your readers on, if you know what I mean, but I appreciate that support. Checks my pulse. Good afternoon, Matt. What's up, Hexicans and Texicans? Jokey, glokey. Hey, 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 what's going on? Still thinking perfect storm coming in, major pump next two weeks. It may be a pump. It may not be a pump. We've been speculating about what's going to happen on the pulse chain. You know, these copies, how much how much value, what gets pumped, what doesn't. You know, I guess in, in one perspective, you could say, well, they split in half and they both have the, you know, half the value. I don't think that's what it's going to be. But, you know, there's a chance that things move in the direction you're not anticipating. And I think that's always the case when it comes to unknown circumstances. David Lee, all the way from southwestern Indiana. 
He traveled to my dad's funeral to show the love, and he continues to show the love to everybody he runs into. So good to see you, David Lee. Appreciate you. Duncan Bates is back. Eye of the storm. Best place to be. It's calm, right? The calm before the storm or the calm in the midst of the storm. And there are all kinds of storms, my friend. We'll talk about those details here in a second. Taryn, great day, y'all. My online ghost is here. Raffoon, there he is, the guy that can eat almost the entire steak. I just called to say I love you. I just called. That's fantastic. Uh, hello, all from southwestern Mexico. Crypto Compassion's in the house. Paul Up, the seventh. Good to see you. Urban Productions, looking like an accumulation zone now for Hex. Yeah, accumulation zone. Um, got some people manipulating things. Rags talked about that on his stream. Um, sounds excellent like Forrest. Yeah, Forrest was my guy. He set me up. He's like, hey, I want you to sound good like me. Uh, Rags, Raid, New Mike. Thanks so much. Appreciate that, Sam Kemp. DJ and Dougie Peach, what's going on, my friend? We got ourselves a stream here. Hex on air. Rags to Riches Raid. Immutables here. Tex Hex. Oh, we're all headed over from Rags. Thanks for being here. Texan Tailgate. There he is. There's the guy who helped me out with all this. MJ Money in the house. Ruskino. Welcome back. Howdy doody. Francis Powell. Facing reality with the dab. Daniel. Bobby Hexelrod. Bobby Hexelrod. Dude. Okay. Bobby, if you actually stick around for my guest today, you're going to be thankful you did. Because it's going to be like old home week. You'll be really happy about it. Anthony Munoz. What's going on? Joey Torres. Jack Handy. Bugs. Raymond. Mark. Marcote. Marcotte. Marcot? Heartbeat. What's up, man? What's up, Raymond? Uh, Hexy Quinn. Hope you're feeling better, Hexy Quinn. Glad to see you in the chat. Um, MZ, what's going on? Cheers from Croatia. Back again. H-Town Hexicans. Houston is in the house. Empty Coiner. Antonio. Drix. You know, it's crazy as I always like to get through this in the bear market. I could get through the chat like really, really quickly. It's so awesome to have you here. Thanks for being here. So many people coming out of the woodwork. It's almost go time, folks. We're a go flight. Um, so the launch can be 2nd of April. That would be nice. Yeah, it could be. It could be also March 28th, which would be tomorrow. Uh, Rag sent me. Thanks so much, JC uh, Culver MD. Watch watching from Puerto Rico. We got lots of folks in Puerto Rico that are, um, in the crypto universe. Thanks for being there. Uh, I know JC Culver MD, the doctor is in. Rich Liberation, what's going on? Crypto Pez, hey Matt, glad I caught you. Looking forward to this. Pulse Chain Trainer, catching you live two times in one week. Yeah, we started yesterday. We're going to go all week. We got a lot planned. I've got some guests, some big time guests I'm trying to pull in. It's going to be really cool. And then next week, going to be at a conference and I might actually be a media guy. I might get media credentials and maybe get to stream from the conference. It's a crypto independence conference. Isn't that cool? Like there's actually a conference that, that marries together that. I'm going to be on a uh, panel for crypto and independence. Maybe even get to talk about Texit, which would be fantastic. Mr. Lee, uh, Rich Liberation, Hornet UK1. When is the soul created? That is the question. Everybody wants to know. Um, yeah, who homeschools? This dude right here. You keep a close eye on those, those girls. Uh, let's set the captives free. Hex Toshi in the house. David Lee with the love. Robert Keller. Can't believe about Coinbase and other providers the government is hammer on. Absolutely. And you know what? This is what it's all about, right? They're all, they're clamping down on, on crypto, right? This is the scorched earth. Uh, crypto chronics here. Hex 647 from the Netherlands. Uh, Peppy is here. Good to see you, Peppy. I saw you over at, uh, Hexologist as well. And I saw you last night on, um, where was it? I think it was Halarski, maybe. Uh, what's going on, Hexman? Looking like a crackhead's a cashing in. There you go. <laughs> wow. Hallelujah. j -Pon PLSX. Moons, what's going on? Tiger Hex is the way to the airport. All the planes. Let's go. Astro. All on us here. Jack Z. Wow, you guys are crazy. Crystal Seth, what's going on? <clears throat> could also be 12 o'clock tonight. That's right. It could be. Crypto ethos in the world of confusion. Crypto heartbeat. You help so many of us calm the storm. Appreciate you, brother. Hey, thanks, man. Got to have the, you know, what good is it, right? What good is it to, to have a bad attitude? That's how I see it. You know, we don't always feel great, but we should be, we should be lifting each other up because life isn't very good otherwise. 
All right. Toronto's in the house. Good to see you. CP from Denmark. All right, let's get into the content today. Folks, this is the calm before the storm. What is the storm? I want to talk about two storms. One is the pulse chain, which is super obvious, right? When the pulse chain launches, the craziness, the dust kicks up. Everybody's talking about it. We're the talk of the town. We're the toast of the town. There could be all kinds of crazy confusion. You can have scammers coming out of the woodwork. All the warnings that Rags warned you about are true. If you went in doubt, hit the brakes is what he said. I think that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful advice. But folks, here's the, the big thing. In this world right now, I don't know if you saw this, but everybody last week was worried about, uh, was well, Donald Trump going to be put in handcuffs? But in the meantime, we saw uh, probably the biggest news story that exists on the planet right now, and that is Russia and China. And all of these people, even across Latin America, are going to be settling their um, oil and gas contracts in the yuan, which is the Chinese currency. And then the Kenyan president yesterday um, basically made a statement saying, get out of the dollar. Folks, the end of the dollar dominance has begun. That's a real storm. That is a real storm. And now we've got the CFTC. We got the um, we got all of the folks from the SEC going after crypto, wanting to shut them down. And that's a big issue. So we got a storm coming through, right? We talked about this, but here's the thing that's amazing. You got to hang on because who's the beneficiary of all this? The things they cannot touch. Immutable contracts on the blockchain with no admin keys, right? You can go after things, right? Centralized things are easy to go after. They have an address. They've got a company, right? How do you serve a lawsuit to something that doesn't exist? It's not a person. It's an immutable contract on the blockchain. Do you realize this, folks? We're decreeing our own value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're agreeing together. And because we agree together, we're saying this is value. And they're going to say, you can't do that. And we're saying, yes, we can. And you can't stop us. That's where the power is. And working together is the key to that, right? If you're just worried about yourself, you might win. Everybody else, though, loses in that process. Folks, it's never been more obvious to me than now, because now it's under attack, right? Binance is sued, all of this stuff. But what are they trying to do? They're trying to tamp it down. They're trying to scare everybody that all oh, crypto's dead. And then they just want to convert over to the CBDCs. Trust us. We're the guys who have the information, right? They don't want anything to get out of hand, especially with the money. And I have a feeling there's a couple people out there. There's a couple of people out there that know that DeFi is a challenge to the old world order. That's a big concern, folks. That's a big concern. You know what? It comes a time in every stream when something special happens, there's probably going to be two things that happen that are special today, but let's, let's welcome the first. He's not only the CEO, He's the CFO, the CIO, the CMO, the CTO. He's the supreme my done told you. He's the mayor of Sassy City, the commander of Couch Cushion Maintenance. In the islands, he's known as Kinkamaya Maya. He's my ace in the hole, my kid Creole, my Bob Dole. He's not internationally known, but he's known to rock the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, the gentle, ginger, giant, genius, and the professor of potent pontification, Brandon from rags to riches. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of couch cushion maintenance. What is up, rags? What's up, dude? What's up? What's, nice up? Job, What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Oh my gosh, what a day! What a storm! Hey, I loved your stream right before this, man. I don't care. You're giving me vote. You're giving me you're giving me ideas. You're saying, "Hey, be careful. You're watching out for us." Do you realize that that's that's actually nice behavior? It's not nice. It's it. So it it looks nice on the outside, but it just serves my own selfish feelings and emotions. Okay. That's all. Okay. That's all. It's all about me. Yeah. It is. It is a win-win scenario then, right? 
You yeah, get something, know. you give something. No, it's not Dude, win-win. Folks, you need to know that Rags put together that uh, links page at texan.cc forward slash links just to be helpful to you. Isn't that nice of him? It is so nice to see you, buddy. Hey, I don't know if you saw this meme recently. Yeah. I, I don't I wish I could pull it up, but I just I can reference it. It said um um Biden um wants to let you know, and it's a picture of him at the podium, that your banking deposits are secure in Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, think about all of this money, right? All this stuff that they're not obviously protecting. How much have we sent over to Ukraine? Hundred billion dollars, something like that. It's nuts, man. It is. Yeah. Money. It's evidence to me in this storm that's coming that we've basically lost this. You know, what is it? U.S. hegemony. This whole idea that we are the the superpower. We're the police. We got the moral high ground. Nope, nope. It ended. It literally officially ended, in my opinion with Russia and China basically saying, hey, we're going to work with all of our partners and we are going to do all of our, you know, petrol transactions in the yuan. That is, that's the big news that no one's talking about. What do you think about that with essentially the dollar dying? Well, the dollar dying, um, crypto pumping, I, I think that it's not going to matter in the long run here because everything's going digital. Um, and I think if they push people too hard and too far, really, really bad things happen. That's what's going to happen here. Hexy, just to let you know, she took way too many doses of Dimetap or NyQuil. Yeah. And she's hallucinating right now. Please, guys, don't hold it against her. But do message her in support and solidarity, please. There you go. There you yep. go. Wow. Well, Richard Hart, you know, he said in the um, it's the highest of stakes documentary. Um, I think it was in the trailer. He said, you know, one of these days you're going to realize that all these crazy loon birds, you know, crypto bros own everything. What's really crazy about that is it, how much of that is actually potentially prophecy. Because if you think about it, if the dollar dies like this and we see maybe maybe not hyperinflation, but really, really high inflation. And, you know, we stop having everything done in the dollar loses its world's reserve currency status. Dude. Dude, he could be right. Like all of these safe havens. I mean, crypto goes crazy. The people that are smart are going to be looking for trustless yield. And what do we have? I mean, with Texan, with Hex, with Ophir, we've got trustless yield, man. I think the smart people already know this stuff, but they're going to get permission to push things over. I mean, look at um, what is it? The NASDAQ is going to do crypto custody. I mean, they're going after everybody. You cannot stop. DeFi, can you? I don't think you can stop it, but you can make it really difficult. So, but here's the thing there are people in government that are um, our allies. Yeah. Remember this too politicians hold Bitcoin, politicians yeah. hold Ethereum, politicians have been wrecked by FTT, politicians have been wrecked by, you know, Celsius. And, you know, they, they want to help support the things that they hold as well. I mean, just look at, you know, Nancy Pelosi, dude, look at her, uh, look at her trading record. So, um, this is a very, very complex thing. It can't be pinpointed or tracked to, to one decision or, or one event. This is going to develop over time and we're in a transition, a macro transition period, Matt, these transition periods can last decades and decades and decades. So yeah. where are we on that timeline? I really think that that timeline probably started early 2000s when we really, you know, really, really started ratcheting up the debt late 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know who is our friend, though, is Tom Elmer. Emmer. He's the guy who's the majority whip. He's the guy that's actually providing some, you know, regulatory clarity. He's the one that actually understands what's going on and is defending, you know, crypto in general. Mm -hmm. And that's at least that you're right. There are some people out there that we can, you know, that are at least somewhat helpful in the government. Yeah, somewhat. And uh, a lot of these people I've, I've come to notice that they don't know what they're talking about. You know, it's just they're reading from a script that the rest of everybody, all their peers are reading from, too. 
So we got to really latch onto the people that are supporting us in, in, in all of this and you hear about Binance. Oh yeah. That today CFTC coming down on Binance after the CFTC came down on BUSD after the C, uh, SEC came down on Paxos, which is their stable coin provider. Um, after Binance had to stop interacting with Silvergate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For all that, dude, it's, it's just crazy. It keeps happening and happening and happening. You know, what's funny is, yeah. I, about, it was probably six months ago. I had a buddy who was connected with a Paxos guy and it was a good friend of his from college. And he's, he's a higher up guy. I don't know if, you know, what kind of level he is, but he, he just wanted to connect me as a crypto guy, Paxos. Right. And he just really wanted me to get together and know this guy. And so he made the connection. We were on a call together and this guy was so cocky and so like laughed in my face basically around DeFi. And it's just so funny to me. You know, it, this is the whole thing, folks. When you embrace this idea of why Bitcoin was created originally, we're going to win in the end, my friends. We really are going to win in the end because we're going to have a vertically aligned ecosystem where we can do our business that isn't the CBDCs. And I think what is this preparation for? You know, you know, you know, you know, I'm really interested in the Bible and you think about the mark of the beast, dude, if there is a thing, the, the mark of the beast that can keep you from buying and selling, dude, one, the fact that it exists and you'd have to take that mark. Well, you know, I think we think of it because it's in the Bible. We think of, oh, it's got to be some like woo thing. It's not, um, it doesn't have to be that, right? It can be something extremely practical like a CBDC or a government wallet or, you know, uh, digital ID. I mean, I'm not sure what it is and I'm not saying I know what it is. But this idea that you could shut somebody off is coming, you know, and it was funny when I was a kid, I'm like, oh, you people are just so worried about this. Oh, yeah. Like as if someone's going to put a chip in you. Uh, yeah, that is where we're headed. And this idea of control, you you start seeing the people, you know, if this dollar thing happens, if crypto keeps on pushing out, you're pushing away all of this innovation from the United States. We're going to get crushed. And what's going to happen is people are going to get desperate. And of course, we've got all these guns and we're going to try to basically fight for it and try to use our military might because we don't have the economic might. Dude, I, this is literally leading to the one world order, you know, this new world order. And so, you know, I hate to be like a downer about it, but the, the, the positive side is I think we're being prepared right now to be able to have this new system that rises from the ashes. And we've been here since the beginning. Do you think I'm being silly? No. Like, why are things... Ch why Why is society changing so much? It was, I mean, it, things, were, things were doing so well for so long. Why have we had this massive amount of change? Well, some, some people might say it's, it's due to financial reasons. Some people might say it's due to the widening gap of inequality between the classes. Um, but, but here's the, the bottom line is, you know, this is a life cycle. Things start and they finish. And where are we? I would say we're certainly past center. Yeah. You know, I think we're, we're heading in that direction. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, but these, this, I think when you look at, how things have changed in the past with societies in a major way, it has to do with the money and that we're in that period right now. We are taking technology and finance and bringing them together more strongly than we have in the past 30 or 40 years. Yeah. And it's, it's amplifying and ramping up. Absolutely. The governments will change because of it. Yeah. Well, and that's the good thing too. You know, I, I think about the reason we started with the, the Texan token, right? Talking to the TNM about Texas independence is you saw this. I, I don't know what you were more inspired by, but I think it was this idea of, I want to be on the side of good. I want to be on the side of independence and freedom and sovereignty. And the fact that we can do something in crypto that can affect that. Well, we're, we're hoping that there is a referendum on the ballot. I hope to go to Austin and testify at the Capitol on behalf of House Bill 3596. But you know what? We'll do everything we can. But here's the amazing thing. When do you think the bull market's coming? The next one. How many how many how many years from now is the top? Let's say the top's in 2025. Okay, so we're talking 2 years, right? Yeah, 2 3 years, yeah, 2025. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Texas only meets once every 2 years for 140 days. 
right? I want the I want the referendum on the ballot. Let's say it doesn't happen. What happens to people that are holding tax and token at the top of the next bull run? I mean, dude, we changed the very nature of politics because the people that care about it have the money. It's incredible, dude. Like, it, you know, people don't realize it right now, but just take a look back. Just imagine, you know, folks in hacks had some sort of political agenda and look at Ballet Brand, right? You put in a thousand bucks and it turns into 10 million. What could, what could hexagons have done if they were on basically tokenizing a community? Well, in this case, it's Texans. And that we are tokenizing a community and they do care about one thing. That unity of voice and agreement can have tremendous political power, dude. And that's, you know, you don't see it right now because we're like, hey, Pulse Chain and all that stuff. But that's really what we're up to, folks. We're looking for communities of people like that have challenges. Look at the Philippines and crypto um, in the Philippines, right? With Ophir Crypto. They're serving people that are in abject poverty. I mean, this is a philanthropic need. Well, what happens if we decentralize the money in the Philippines and people support people in the Philippines? Guess what? What happens when poor people have money, Brandon? They fix their world. Yeah, they cease to be poor people. Mm -hmm. You want to address big issues in this world? I'm not saying it's throwing money at it, but you know what's cool about DeFi crypto is you have to like be responsible to be in it. <laughs> Right. It's, it's got so many things. You got to educate yourself. You got to be paying attention. You got self custody. You've got all of these kind of things. And it's like, it teaches you in addition to providing for you as well. I think that's a really big deal, man. It makes you like step into the game and get on the court. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. And it's a wonderful thing. And that's, that's the whole point. There is, uh, I think that there could be a separation in values and principles in different economic situations, right? Yeah. I've known a lot of people growing up that really try to take care of each other, regardless of how much money they do have or don't have. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's almost like some of the people that can least afford to do it are the people that give away everything to help others. Yeah. 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 No, I totally agree. Okay. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Okay. So my, um, my uh, producer is yeah. uh, talking in my ear here. Folks, you know how close the pulse chain is, right? You can feel it. You can taste it, right? It's one of those things. Brandon, what yeah. are you doing? Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm about to blow my nose, man. Blow your nose. This is important to me. All right, hold on, hold on. I have on. you on the stream. All right, all right. Hold push, on, hold on. You got to push the cough button, man. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> This is a professional show. <laughs> oh, gracious, man. All right, let's what go. are we doing? What are we doing? So, folks, you came here because of the pump, right? You came here because it's the calm before the storm. You came here because you knew something special was about to happen, and you were not far wrong. Because you thought you were just going to hear from Brandon from Rags to Riches or Crypto Harvey just yakking it up, preaching at you or somebody making fun of you or doing that. But you know what? Everything old is new again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the pre-viral show, the Crypto Panda. What's up? I dude. know. Dude, I I thought Brandon had a heads up because as soon as you started, he immediately turned off. I it. know. I know. I th he figured something was coming, man. Dude, Rags, you're a, you're a ginger. Yeah. For, what? Well, the, the, the hair that grows. Yeah, yeah. Dang, and Rags, dude. before you before you hang up or leave, I just want to let you know I, I have <laughs> nothing intelligent to say. <laughs> well, so. we're taking it back, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh wow. Good to see everybody. everybody. What's up, Hexy Quinn? What's up, yeah. chat? Everybody's so excited to see the panda is back out of hibernation. Hey. Yes. Where'd you go, man? Where'd you go? I've been, uh, I keep saying I've been, I was lurking and working. Lurking was, and working. I was working. hanging out. I mean, obviously, you can't not check in on things and see how it's going, but um, I, crypto for me has always been the extra 
you know, the, mm-hmm. the uh, work, you know, I work yeah. to buy more crypto, but I work for my families. And so I use a lot of this time to just focus on the business. It was great. It's been a great exercise. And uh, yeah, and I, I learned so many things in the past 18 months about crypto, about myself and my approaches to it. Like, I feel like every six months was some massive lesson <laughs> that mm-hmm. I was learning. And, uh, and as of late, it's really, I've been doing a lot and digging, digging into security in uh not just not just like hardware wallet things like that but what are those other things we've got some of us you know have these 15 year stakes on a wallet it's a long time to be sitting in a wallet you can't move it so i i've been making lists to share with friends i might make a video uh about it but people don't like watching security videos you know so i might have to trick them into uh into getting in there but uh kudos to you guys i know i know i said this before but i was literally talking with a friend about this yesterday uh, thank you for building something on Pulse Chain and launching it early, uh, with, where everyone knows that if they participate in it, uh, they are going to be participating in a project that have have devs um, that are welcoming uh, yeah. Pulse Chain. I'm not saying that 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 other people aren't as well, but uh, it's the 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 Texan the Texit cause is is so easy to talk about and so p- easy for people to understand. And I mean, I know you guys probably talk about this all the time, but the timing just couldn't be more perfect. It seems um, with some of the stuff that's coming. Who knows? It's such a weird, weird world. Doesn't Brandon yeah. kind of look a little bit like Crypto Panda? Hang on, let me let me do this here. Hang on. <laughs> you know, he's uh, yeah, we could be I, brothers. We could I got pass. I got forked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they forked me. Got, Rags the Panda. Rags. There's the <laughs> <stuff. laughs> Dude, that is so legit, Stay dude. Panda, it, it's so great. You know what? You bring. And you always have since the very beginning, you bring such a settling, leveling force to the whole thing. And, you know, we talked about old pre-viral show and it's been going for so long, right? We've been waiting for two years. You know, you waited for two years on Hex. Everybody is waiting. You know, we talked about eating some popcorn. I really think we're getting close to that point. We think potentially in the next 24 to 48 hours. What say you, Panda, that's come out of hibernation? I, th- I mean, I think it's this is the first one of those really big heads ups Richard has given about it. Yeah. And I also think it's uh, it's somewhat telling, you know, the normal uh, the normal reaction would be for us to see something like that and then us sit back and watch it pump. And I and I went to it and it, and it didn't. And I was like, of course, because people are starting to maybe feel a little bit burned out by it. But it, the, the narrative is always the same. When it pumps, it's super fun. And it, when it doesn't, some people get a little bit angsty about it. But but those who know just sit and chill and be like, that's fine. I, I mean, I literally bought some yesterday, but you know, and then and then it dumped, but I don't care because I know yeah. where this is going. So I can sit, I can go, oh, I can pretend that I'm good at timing the market and I'm not. And that's exactly why uh, you know, the, that I'm here is that I don't have to time it because I'm long because- with it. But yeah, look who's I, here. It could be any day. Everybody's saying hi to you, by the way. Everybody's so glad to oh, see man. you. Oh, man. Good to see everybody. Crypto stylist in the house, dude. What do you say to that? pre viral show featuring Crypto Panda. You're yeah. featured even. That's pretty that's, crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you're like the you're like the uh, prodigal son who's returned home. Brandon. I just come in. I come in. I, you know, I uh, get the crowd excited. That's and, right. Uh, and then I go and... and and then go run and try to get rid of these Red Bulls that I've had to get myself pumped. All right. So here's the deal. I warned Brandon about this. I'm warning you. I want to deliver for the the audience. I want to deliver. Will you be like on standby with popcorn ready? Because I have a feeling it's coming soon and I want to at least have a stream. It doesn't have to be a long stream, but I want to, you know, fulfill the prophecy of just sitting back, looking at the charts, rags, looking at the charts, showing us what's going on and us literally eating popcorn panda. It's, that's been a, it's been open on my calendar since we agreed to it. So yeah, just let me know uh, and I'll jump on. And, and I mean, I, it's the same always. You, if yeah. you send me a message and say, are you able to jump on? I wanted to jump on last night, but I was out with the, the family. And then another time I was on an airplane, I was like, that might be kind of cool, but <laughs> wasn't gonna work out. I'll try anytime I can, man. Just just send the message. But for this one specifically, yes, I will have popcorn. Um, it's gonna be so fun. And Rags, you know, I know uh, we were talking about you, or Crypto Heartbeat was talking about you earlier about having a strategy. And I think uh, Crypto Heartbeat and I are on the same page of like just kind of sitting back. Yeah. Um, I 
in one sentence, Rags, what do you think? What do you think people should be prepared to do to make smart moves? And and you know what? Let me let me take a second and ask mm-hmm. that a different way. There are people who have who sacrificed for Pulse Chain and Pulse X, but this is a good clip. People that don't have either that miss those. What do you think that they should do when uh, when Mainnet launches? I would uh, I would take the most amount of money that I can get access to. I would have it ready in my Coinbase account. Um, in ethereum and the reason we say ethereum is because that's probably going to be the most stable asset to bridge over to pulse chain initially Mm -hmm. because there will be no stables and hex could be potentially pretty volatile uh, after the fork so just have your money ready uh, send it over to pulse chain on day one personally i would purchase 50%, 50%, use 50% of those reserves, buy, and then start a six-month dollar cost averaging uh, regime. And that way, if it pumps day one, you're going to have exposure and there's a possibility it will never come back to day one prices. So if that's the case, you can feel good because you got exposure day one and you don't, you're not waiting for a dip after that. You're just dollar cost averaging and chilling. That's all you do, in my opinion. That's great advice. I think yeah, that's man. that's perfect. I mean, ha- basically the uh, the the mantra I keep hearing is have some ETH ready. Yeah, have ETH ready and uh, look, know how to use the bridge. PulseRamp.com. PulseRamp.com. So I think this is really important. Since you've been gone, Crypto Panda, we have brought in a lot of new folks into crypto. No coiners. We got guys like Sam Kemp, 78 years old, dude. He is big time crypto now. But we have a lot of people out there who are literally like, I think they hang on Rags's every word. They're like, if Rags does it, I'll do it. And so I think we need to be cautious about this fact that for you and I, Panda, you know, I got into the Pulse Sack. I got into the Pulse Sack Sack. We've been around for a long time. I'm going to pretty much do nothing. But I want to be also really cautious about the fact that you know, if in fact, let's just run a scenario. Let's say there's over the next six to 12 months, there's a 300 X in pulse X or pulse, right? Some big number. Okay. And I don't know what it is. I'm not saying I know (laughs) the difference between day one and day six probably aren't super significant. Do you agree, Brandon? I agree. Uh, In the grand scheme of things, I agree. Yeah, if you watch if you watch the launch of everything, then yeah, yeah it, it it's it feels like a pump, but it's sort of going that way. And, and for the record, I follow on rags is everywhere when it comes to food and fashion. You should not not everything else. It's all it's all carnivore though. <laughs> I, that's why, man, it works. It works. You're still carnivoring it up, bro. As much as I can, yeah. yeah I'm like yeah, I'm yeah. like carnivore first, and then uh, cookies. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I get you. <laughs> yeah. It's a spectrum. Yeah, so right. H-Town Hexagon says, does it have to be in a centralized exchange or could you bridge from MetaMask? It, the bridge isn't from the centralized exchange. He's saying that's the on-ramp for your money. Do you want to clarify that? Brandon? Yeah, I was going to ask that. Why not have the Ethan MetaMask? Or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so okay. just the problem that we're dealing with right now, I've seen this a lot. I mentioned this earlier, is that people are having problems getting uh, Ethereum to their Coinbase, from their bank to Coinbase and to their MetaMask. So yeah. just start that process now of getting that money from your bank uh, and stage to be able to deploy, whether that's in I MetaMask see. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in all the bridges, folks, it's a website that you go to and it's going to allow you to take your Ethereum. You're going to lock it up in this contract and then it's going to issue you Ethereum that can be used on the pulse chain. We call it wrapped Ethereum. So uh, that's all that is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. we've got... I mean, this is like the olden days, folks. We've got um, 118 people here. Dude, it's because of you, Crypto Panda. Everyone's so pumped about the Pulse Chain. All these folks are coming out of the woodwork. It's so great to, to have you here. But yeah, I think that um, that's good advice, right? Having your powder dry and ready. Now, let's talk about this. I've often thought when I look at any chart, and I look at Texan even, right? People are excited when things launch. Right. And then there's also people who are manipulators. So let me ask you guys a kind of a two part question. Knowing that things pump because of excitement, and I would say, let's call those retail people just super excited. 
right? And things pump and everybody buys. Well, let's say you're somebody who's sneaky and you've got a big bag. Well, because you know people are emotional by nature, especially the kind of the retail people, would you try to, you know, once you start seeing people, let's let's say I'm going to, you know, say something crazy though. Let's say in the first you know, minutes or hours, we shoot up 10x and there's a group of people who have been literally, you know, maybe they went in too hard on Pulse and Pulse X and they're like, I, can, I need to take some money off the table because I, I, I really went in too heavy. I thought this was going to launch in like six months and it's been two years and it gets to that 10x and they see it kind of tip you know we, we, it hits that top and people start selling there are people who will manipulate that and try to push it down harder right because they're not getting the money out for themselves they're trying to push it hard and scare people so that they can buy in even lower that's the only reason i think that there could potentially be a dip is that reasonable logic yeah those are whale games i mean the, the, and that's that's the thing is you can't i mean Maybe, maybe someone on the stream here, maybe someone in chat is, you know, is a whale, but I don't, we're not able to play whale games. If we try to do anything that they're doing now, you could be like a, a you could be a, a wallet sleuth and sit yeah. there and watch, you know, what things are going on. But if you're not able to play whale games, why try? You could just yeah. get yourself wrecked. And by the way, the, what is it? The Pulse X sacrifice wallet has the largest number of die, but there's been no announcement of uh, of die being paired over that that to me would be the most likely culprit in terms of a stable coin but why do you think it is <laughs> why do you think that it is that there's been no announcement of a stable coin because if you if there's a run up in pulse chain or pulse x and you need to exit your position where are you going yeah like yeah. there there isn't a stable place to go so it's like you kind of have to you kind of have to be smart about where it is that you're going to, to, to take those profits in the early stages. Because if there's no announcement of an official stable coin, then you're jumping into something else that could have high volatility, which by the way, if, if you love, if you love another project and you know that, that people are going to be, you know, the devs are going to be supporting it. Well, then you can jump into that and that's fine. Some people want to get more uh, hack, what would be called hex. And so they'll sell their pulse for more hex. They just love it. So that's kind of an easy one. But I mean, look at the volatility we've had with that. So, um, yeah, there are definitely people. This is crypto. There's definitely going to be people just swinging around and see who is able to hang on and and who uh, who is who just goes flying off the tail. But the reality is, if you want to be the safest and the smartest and you're in this for the long term, don't grab don't grab the tail. Just sit there and watch. Watch yeah. it flap around. What do, you think, what do you think, Brandon, about a, a potential dip? You think there's a possibility? Here's what I know, and here's what I've studied. The people who destroy the price at the beginning are whales. They're not the little guy. Right. Every single time. It's 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 literally there there could be 97% of people are gonna hold for the 90 days, 3% are gonna dump, they're gonna have the biggest bags. Now, why? It's because a 2X for somebody that has $100 is a whole lot different than a 2X for somebody who has $2 million day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's massive. So yeah, they're going to be incentivized to go ahead and take that. And they'll, they'll buy back in later and make another 50X and they're going to be fine. So do I think we're going to have a dip? I think that we could have a dip after it pumps, maybe a 10 or 20X correction of 50% or 60%. And then we take off from there. I, I definitely don't think it will go. It will stay under sack price. I don't think that no. um, because I, I've seen that be defended very, very well in other projects. So I think that's right. kind of almost an unspoken law now. Okay. Okay. That's helpful to know. So one of the things that was mentioned here too by Pepe is um, you know, Rags said Coinbase or any exchange may hold your money up to seven days or more. That is something that's interesting. One of the things that you've also talked about in your streams, Brandon, is I think MoonPay and Apple Pay. Obviously, that's not direct from a, a bank account, but that KYC process happens a lot quicker now. Whereas I've had the same problem putting in, um, you know, having access to money for a period of time on Coinbase. Um, so, folks, all he was talking about was a fiat on ramp. Really, what we're suggesting is get ETH into your MetaMask wallet, get it sent over to, you know, a, a non-custodial wallet and hold. That's really what you're you're encouraging people to get to. Is that right, Brandon? Yeah, 
just like yeah just have it prepped have it have it prepped and prepared and ready to deploy yep to do yep, all yep. the hard work now yep awesome so crypto panda you've been lurking here you are back are you gonna start streaming again are you gonna be sharing videos are you gonna be you know what's your what's your plans what are the plans for crypto panda i'm probably i'll probably jump on random streams if i get asked um the when i was making videos before it was just really, I kept getting, I would get asked a lot of questions or something would come to mind. And so instead of leaving someone a long voice message, I would make a, a video about it and then I would just share it with everyone. So I might do something like that um, on these like little security tips. And they're re it's really, really simple stuff. Like things, I'm not even going to cover the stuff that Papa B and some of those other guys cover, but it's like little, little things. And I'll give you one right now. If you have, someone asked me the other day because they, they did a bunch of these long-term stakes in a wallet. And some people, some security people are like, that's not going to help you, but I don't care for me. It's peace of mind. If you, if you have long-term stakes in a wallet, that wallet's dead to you. Don't do anything else. Don't hold any other coins in it. Don't hold Ethereum in it. Don't do anything. Go get another wallet. I don't mean another address, another wallet. You can make a new uh, profile on Chrome. You can make a new profile on Firefox and pre pretend that that's 15 years for, for some people. Pretend that it doesn't exist anymore and just use it. Send ETH to it when you want to end your stakes and do that. Also, go to Etherscan. You can, you can sign up for Etherscan for free and you can set alerts so that you can see when ETH, ETH goes into a wallet. You can have it send you an email. Don't use your regular email with your name. Go get something from Gmail or Proton or whatever it is that you want. And then you can sit there and you'll get an email if you see Ethereum going to that wallet. I saw a kid yesterday got his hex and people are always embarrassed to share why it is they got hacked. Please share. You're, like, you're helping other people. But he got his hex hacked. He shared the wallet and I could see he had $50 worth of ETH. That's like leaving your keys in the front door. You know, if you got long, if you have long-term stakes and you've got ETH in that wallet, you're just leaving your keys in the front door. And so you could literally see the hacker send his hex, send it to um, whatever, uh, one inch, got rid of it. Um, then the next thing they did is they sent all the rest of the ETH out to that, that uh, out to their own wallet. So it's just these little simple things. Don't, you know, there's so many things. I got a list of them. I might make a video, but uh, you'll see me on Twitter because I like rooting for stuff. You know, I like liking and, and there's so many amazing content creators. Um, I'd rather just help support them and show up okay. uh, and be on Twitter, you know, liking and, and, and retweeting and stuff like that. Um, but uh, when it comes to streams, like especially with you guys, you know, if you need me to jump on and, and sound excited about stuff, I, okay. I'm happy to do that as well. <laughs> so Rags, I want you to do something, if you would. Would you pull up the Texan chart? Because oh, I, yeah. I want to show, I want to show Crypto Panda what's been happening since he went into hibernation. Because I don't know if you know this, Crypto Panda. Um, we got some people requesting it here. Matthew, you are right on. Can we hear about Texan for once? He says, "Lots of your investors are here, and we never get to hear bullishness." I feel like you know what? We are very cautious because we recognize this is a big story about the pulse chain. But we can't help but share the good news about what we've been doing while Crypto Panda has been taking care of the family. And so, Brandon, will you show Crypto Panda what's up? Yeah. So, by the way, I'm going to pretend that I haven't been watching. This I, know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. I was hoping you'd roll. With I that. see his tweets. I see his tweets. Day 61. I mean, it's so yeah. good, you guys. It's so good. The um, here's what's neat though. I, I messaged Trading View and I said, "Hey, Trading View, somebody set the do the price of Tex into a dollar day one, and there was a murder wick that destroyed our ability to even view the chart properly. So just today, they removed that day one murder wick where somebody set the price absurdly high, um, and now we have a pretty cool looking chart here." Um, and I would say, you know, what is this? What can we say here? From the bottom to where we are right now, we're up about uh, 3.8x, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a nice little looking chart. We had a short sell-off period, and uh, we've been defending uh, this level pretty well. So we'll see what happens here. By yeah. the way, look at the shape of this. Look at the shape of this. This is, this is every launch ever. Yeah. You put every launch ever and you put them over each other. This is what it looks like. This is what a good project looks like. It goes, boop, sellers come off, it crashes, it comes back down and it goes sideways, goes up, 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 up. I mean, this chart's beautiful, but expect this. Expect this for the launches of everything, for that first mm -hmm. rise up, the dip down. Don't get, I don't know, get freaked out if you want. I'm not going to tell people how to feel, but just 
know this. I, I, I got to spend time with Randy Hilarski. I love that dude. He's oh, awesome. Yeah. I, per, in, he per, in Panama. He's awesome. He goes, there's no way. I've been, he's seen like, he's been a part of like 80 something launches, if not more. He's like, they all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. There's no way. And this is like a year and a half, two years ago. There's no way that this is going to be any different. So just know that knowing, knowing will help you manage your own expectations about what's actually happening. And if you want to try to ride that pump up, then go ahead. But like I said, I don't know where you're going to exit. Yeah. Um, Cause other things might do that as well. That's great. Well, you know, it, you know, I'm no TA guy, Brandon, but it really looks like that. You know, we had one day Panda where we went up 63% in one day. And of course you see those green candles that just punched it up to almost, I think four zeros and a six. Um, but what's interesting is it's still above that kind of, you know, line. What, what are your thoughts there, Brandon? Where are we sitting as far as, you know, moving averages and stuff like that? I know it's early. Well, I'm not, there's, there's not much that we can really say is, is kind of being the, the founders of this. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I I've been, um, I've been very, very happy with the short sell off period, which is pretty cool. And then in terms of, you know, other charts that are around the community right now, I think ours certainly looks, looks the best. So uh, in terms of kind of what Panda said, this is pretty much par for the course for a project that's doing what it's supposed to do. So yep. that's, that's what I would say. And the beauty of this is there are copies on the Pulse chain. And we confirmed right now in the testnet V3, you can connect with the D app on the testnet and you can stake and you can, you know, we support the testnet V3. And of course, as soon as things go live, you know, we will obviously support and get things set up with the RPC settings and make sure that we have the right setup and testing for support of the Pulse chain. But that could be literally any moment, folks. One of the things I want to transition to here, well, before I do that, if you have any questions about Texan, you can go to t.me forward slash Texan token, and you can join us in the Telegram, and there's a lot of wonderful people that will help you there. Um, so... I wanted to to really talk about this um, this pulse chain launch and Richard. Okay, so Richard, I'm just himself. just before you get started, Matt, in about yeah. two minutes, I got to jump off. I don't want to be rude, but if you oh, see yeah, me, yeah. disappear, that's fine. Okay. Well, let hey me... guys, Matt, let me interrupt you too. Richard oh. Hart just tweeted. Okay, hang on, let me pull it he up. He said testnet V two B will be permanently offline in forty eight hours from now. Oh, shnikes! Hang on. Okay, okay, <laughs> guys. Okay, you just said shnikes. I thought that was shnikes. going. I would have been like. Matt. oh my gosh but he says please migrate testnet usage to v3 so i don't know we'll see okay i love when breaking news happens on the stream so let me let me pull this up folks you don't even have to open your twitter you got it right here this is exciting all right sharing the screen richard hart with the update while we're on stream oh my gosh all right here we go testnet v2b which is v3 right no no that's the v2b yeah, so that's too, going man. offline completely. Okay, so what do you take from that, Brandon? What's your gut reaction to that tweet? Um, gut reaction is that let me see here. Checking this out, I think that this is the this is one of the steps that has to happen before we launch. I mean, we're yeah. we're just inching closer. It's a, another step. So pretty neat here. I don't really know the technical ramifications of what they're talking about here. Um, well, well, I think yeah. one of the things that my gut says, you know, any projects that are out there that haven't migrated over to the testnet V3, you know, and you're on V2, V2 is going away. And, you know, not to say that they have to clear up space, but that's that's done, right? The old V2B is done. Testnet V3 is here. But it is a little bit weird that he would say that because if there wasn't any ramifications for it, he wouldn't make a tweet about it. So I think it's just another it's another point. What do you think, Panda, before you have to go? Yeah, those, you know, this is, this, it's server space. All, all these things take, these test nets take up resources because it's, it's a, it's literally the version that's going live. So my, my, uh, my takeaway is that they're moving. Uh, they want to shut down that code base and uh, they want to have that space for mainnet. So it's just another sort of, I mean, we're, we, we couldn't be getting any closer. Well, in Crypto Panda, you're the CEO of a software development company, right? Yep. Okay, so he knows what he's talking about, folks. 
and you're right. I mean, if you got to clear up space and you got to get things out of the way, I mean, think about this. You got people coming over to the house. What do you do? You tidy up my friends, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's more than, it's more than just server space. It's resources. You have to think about the code base. You have to support it. You have to, you know, other alarms are going off if things aren't working. So you can just put it all under resources and, and they're trying to, you know, to maximize what it is they have before they go, go live. So. Wow. 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 Folks break gentlemen here on chat. it. Be good, buddy. Thank um, you guys. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> See you soon. Folks. Thank you, Crypto Panda, for being on the stream today. Folks, how about that? We had a segment, almost like the Biz with Briz, where we brought in Crypto Panda for the pre-viral show. I'm hoping at some point in time we can cross out the pre-portion of that, and I think Pulsion is going to make this go viral. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, I, I believe so, man. I think everybody's going to ape in because everybody's a bunch of DJs and <laughs> and they get here and they get to listen to us. So that's a win-lose. Win for you, lose for me. That's <laughs> Right. Dude, this is so awesome. Were you surprised that Panda came in or did you know he was coming in? Uh, I had my suspicions. Yeah, I've been trying to set you up for a while here. I've been reaching yeah. out to him like I want to surprise Brandon yeah. on the stream. Folks, this is a big, big time. We appreciate you so much. I'm going to we're getting up to the hour here. Um, there is a storm coming. And here's the, the big I think the big takeaway for me. I always want to remind you what we're here for and why we're here. And you know what I'll do, Brandon? I'll let you sign off and I'll give them the last uh, kick in the pants. Thanks for joining here. I appreciate you so much, dude. Be good, man. All right. Take care. I just rugged him. Sorry about that, Brandon. Folks, I want to remind you before you go, the reason that we're here, you know, there's a lot more going on in this world than just crypto. It's something to be excited about because as things fail, especially the financial system, the dollar, all of these things, we stand to benefit long-term. In the short run, there's going to be a lot of pain. If you see what's happening in France, you see what is happening in Israel, across the world, right? Centralized people are trying to get power. And we're in something that, you know, it seemed very innocuous at the beginning, right? Oh, put up a contract on the blockchain. It doesn't have admin keys. See, everybody that's been trying to do utility-based crypto has built a company and they put in a marketing department and they've got, you know, a, an address and a corporation and all these things. And Richard Hart knew the reason that Bitcoin was created was to remove this, right? No counterparty risk, censorship resistant. And he's building that way. And we're on the eve of the Pulse Chain launch. You've been waiting for so long. But here, I want you to understand something as I see it. This is way more than you know, pump my bags and, you know, win Lambo. This is a big deal. Richard Hart is going to be under fire even more because the more successful you are, the more the arrows get shot at you. And so they're going to try to do everything they can. And I think there's some people that recognize that DeFi is something that you can't affect. Well, now we've got a layer one and that layer one is, you know, it's Ethereum, but the beauty of this strategy, and it's almost like, Richard Hart is playing 3D chess with people. By including the system state, you get their buy-in. Everybody has their fingerprints now on this. If you hold Ethereum or, or coins on the Ethereum blockchain, you're going to have a copy over on the Pulse chain. That's what this is all about, folks. And no one wants to nuke themselves, right? And so that's why I think that we have a, a really unique opportunity. Now, the Pulse chain has to be properly decentralized, right? If it was just up in you know, a series of nodes that were on AWS, somebody could in the U.S. government say, hey, shut them down, right? They could have, you know, because of um, Amazon Web Services being where they are, or Azure, they could team up with them and they could, you know, do an executive order potentially and shut them down. I know that Richard's smarter than that. He probably has some stuff in the public clouds, but he also has these nodes and probably has this properly decentralized because the attacks are going to come people around us are going to be struggling and suffering and challenged. You're going to have family members that are out of money. You may even run into people who don't have enough food. That's what's coming. That's the real storm that's coming. I mean, we're going to see massive, massive issues in the financial system. But here's the, the hope of all of this. It has to happen, and it's happening for a reason. And you're in a position 
And I feel like I'm in a position where, hold on a second, there's provision in the midst of this storm. And it's exciting. The pulse chain is super exciting. I so appreciate the fact that it's finally here. And my wife can't, you know, ask me, hey, when's it going to launch? It's so close. But I want to remind you, the key to us winning is all of us and bringing more and more people that there's a place where there's food and we're one beggar helping another beggar find food. And when you're a beggar, you don't consider yourself better than somebody else. We're all in the same situation together. But the beauty of this is everything that exists in this world that is value is an extension of your personal labor. And that is your private property. You are not an accident. Your creative ability that is the sweat of your brow can come together in community, can invest in a immutable contract on the blockchain to get trustless yield, and we can decree our own value. It is the greatest, most peaceful revolution there exists because it is the core of resources. But all of those contracts, all they are, Tex and Hex, whatever you want to put it, all it is, is a group of people coming together and decreeing our own value. And what is fiat? The definition of fiat is by decree. We choose what we say is value because value is negotiated between parties, right? If I'm selling something to you and you're selling something to me, you might say, hey, will you give it to me for 20 bucks instead of 50, right? We negotiate value. I, I talk about this all the time. Let's say in the attic of my old house, I, I find a a uh, an original picasso and i bring it downstairs and my 11 year old son sees it and he goes dad that thing's terrible why is his why are his eyes in the wrong place and why is it all blue but i take it to a museum cur a curator and they freak out and they say that's worth 22 million dollars let's go sell it at sotheby's because value is perceived by parties my son doesn't understand who Pablo Picasso was, doesn't understand the provenance of that, doesn't understand how important it is. And you know what? It's just paint on a canvas. All fiat is, is paper and ink. You cannot use an Australian dollar to get a Coca-Cola at the corner store here in Central Texas. That should illustrate to you that it's just about our agreement. We're not on the gold standard, right? So we finally, regular people have an opportunity to decree our own value. That's what these things are. And to me, nothing more powerful than the Texas independence movement and people who believe in freedom and sovereignty coming around this. And folks, I want to tell you what, the only thing we're going to see is more press and more exposure and more need to defend freedom and sovereignty in this world. And so what are we doing? We're tokenizing communities. The first one is Texan. The second one is Ophir Crypto. That's helping literally in a philanthropic way, serving people who are in abject poverty in the Philippines, helping give them an opportunity. What happens when you help people who have no money have money? They cease to be poor. We can impact those things, but they get to make the choices. We're not a bunch of centralized planners in the United States saying, we know what's best for the Philippines. No, we are setting the captives free from debt and consumer slavery. And folks, if you see the power of that mission, you need to recognize something. If you sacked for Pulse and Pulse X and this thing launched, it's going to the moon. That's how I see it. No financial advice. I'm just an idiot. However, if it, this does anything like the past layer ones have done and, you know, DEXs have done, we have something really, really special here. It's really, really special. And you're going to find yourself in abundance. And if you look at what Richard Hart is building, I think this move, I think Richard sees it as well. He is going to become, I think, he's going to receive some of the glory that he wants, but he's also going to change the lives of so many people. Because if it wasn't for Richard Hart, we wouldn't have the pulse chain. If it wasn't for the pulse chain, we wouldn't have the opportunity we have. And so I want to say thank you to Richard Hart for that. But two, I also want to say to you, you're not an accident. You're here for a reason. You have creative ability. Use it. Use it for good. You have the ability to make a choice. Make the right choice. And daisy chain those good choices together, and you will see that you will have an abundance, press down, overflowing. And I'm going to tell you this. Money's just a tool. All it is is a tool. And here's the thing. Tools are meant to be used. Use them wisely, right? 
But what's going to happen when regular people have an abundance? I think they're going to take care of people around them. And the people of Texas, you know what they're going to do? They're going to stand up for freedom and sovereignty. Whether it's this go around in the Texas House or next go around in the next legislative session. But I'll tell you, the next time we go around, there's going to be a lot of us with a lot of resource, and we are going to change the people in Austin. Folks, there's something going on in this world that is beyond human comprehension. In my opinion, it's supernatural, and it's so exciting to know that there's provision in the midst of a storm. So thank you so much for joining The Pulse today. My name is Matt. We had some great characters on here. Crypto Panda's back. It's going to be popping the popcorn. It's always good to see the mayor of Sassy City on with us. Folks, love each other. Consider others in addition to yourselves. Use David Lee as an example. Go out of your way to care for people. Breathe life into people. And if you got negative people around you, get rid of them and move forward. Do not nuke your account and do not mess with Texas. Take care, everybody.